Hi there, uh, this is Murph and I will show you how to install uh, FreeNAS, uh, which is a free uh, open source NAS appliance uh, uh, install on uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox. So to do that, uh, first uh, you have to have Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager installed, uh, which you can download from virtualbox.org. Uh, and FreeNAS, uh, ISO download from FreeNAS.org, uh, which I already did. Um, from this website, I think. So, FreeNAS.org. There are two flavors, 32-bit uh, and 64-bit flavors, so you can download uh, either one. Uh, so, for my test, I downloaded this 32-bit, uh, and I will show you how to uh, install it. Okay. Let's go to the virtual box and I'm gonna click on new. Give it a name, FreeNAS A3, and we'll choose a BSD as the a type because FreeNAS is based on the free BSD kernel. Continue. And I'm gonna choose a 1500 megabyte as the memory, just in case, uh, and create a new virtual desk here. We're going to choose the default. Okay. And let's give it a name, say OS1, OS disk. Okay, so give it 8. So I plan to install uh, NFS and iSCSI at some point on this appliance. So for now, I'm going to show you the installation, but I'm just going to add a uh, few more disks here. We're going to storage. And you're gonna say add hard disk. So I like to keep the OS separated. NFS one. Create. Let's give one more. I'll call it iSCSI. One. This gives us uh, three gig each. Well, that's about it. I cannot add any more disk on ID controller. So let's mount the hard drive, uh, the ISO that I downloaded here. Okay. Give it thirty-two bit. So just like that. Open. Hit OK and hit OK. And I'll change the network to bridged because right now it's uh, NAT. Uh, I want to be able to access this uh, VM from the outside network, uh, which is on my home network actually, so from other computers. Uh, so just hit OK here. And double click on it. So I should boot from this uh, ISO here. So similar to a free BSD installation, looks like. Okay, so uh, we're gonna choose uh, install, which is a default, just press enter. And we'll choose DA0, which is the first disk that I added, it has eight gigabyte. Hit okay, I'm fine, yes. You want to, uh, you know, erase everything. I say yes, fine, it's blank, anyway. And now it's going to go through the installation. Almost there. Okay, so it's done. So it's saying success, uh, successful here. Okay, please remove this and hit OK. I say I'll come and hit OK. And I'm going to say just reboot the system and press enter
So the good thing about VirtualBox is that you can install VirtualBox uh, uh, VM Manager, Oracle VM uh, VirtualBox Manager on uh, Linux, Windows, or Mac, or even I think Slice as well. Um, so it's pretty uh, easy and install and it's free, right? Oh, I forgot to unmount the disk here. It's gonna shut down. Okay, I just gonna go here, storage. Just gonna just gonna remove the disk drive to need it. Done. While we are here, I'm gonna add a uh, few more disks. Uh, gonna add iSCSI controller. SCSI controller, sorry. Go here. SCSI controller because I'm gonna play with some RAID functionality later on so click on create a new disk and I'm gonna add two more NFS disk for NFS okay good NFS2 2 gigabyte is fine add one more disk with NFS Two gig is fine, and I'm gonna add one more for the ice card that I'm gonna use for. Okay, continue. Two. Done. So I have two for ice card and three for NFS stuff, so that should be good enough. Fire it on. You can press enter here, make it faster. Okay, it looks like it detected all those hard drives. This is gonna look for DHCP IP address, so it looks like it got the IP. So I have a home uh, router provided by my ISP that has DHCP running. And uh, so, hmm, it's saying it failed to start DHCP client. Should be okay, I think. Okay, looks like it got an IP, so it should be okay. So, um you have a few options to do here. If you want to change your IP addressing, I'll keep the same for the DSCP. But if you say if you're running a home NAS and if you're installing on an actual machine, then you could uh, actually uh, uh, change the IP address to static. Uh, but you can also do it from the web. Uh, but there is an option here, so you can basically choose an option that you like. Um, you can change the web GUI password. So by default, there is a password for the web GUI. I'm going to log in to this web GUI here, this URL here. Uh, so let's go. Uh, and there are a lot of options. You can reboot and you know go to shell if you want. Configure DNS and all that. But right now it's all configured to DHCP, and I will keep it at that that way for now. Um, so I'll go to here. HTTP. One six.
13 or 105, sorry, my bad. Okay, so we're in. So it didn't ask for my password. So there's an alert here that is going to say, you know, you should uh, change your password. So now we have it installed. So I'm just going to go uh, to account, admin account, and change admin password, change password. So I'm going to say, you know, some password that I like to have. It's always a good practice to change the default password for any system you install because then you know, you don't have to worry about hacking getting it hacked uh, so that's done uh, so we have the alert gone so let's see uh, what are the storage we have so there are different options that we can play with uh, there are quite a lot of uh, options here so you can go to the uh, you can have groups users for your per, uh, different options your system under system you can you know uh, perform rsync tasks uh, NTP server, you can configure NTP if you have an NTP and you have reporting here that gives you some performance information which is very helpful um, and there are a lot of options, you can go to the FreeNAS website and there are a lot of documentation around that uh, so the one that uh, yeah, network is basically changing the network configuration so if you want to change the IP address and all that and add more IP address as a uh, you know, alias then you can do this as well here so I'm going to go storage and I will go to volumes uh, to see what are the volumes do I have. Sorry about that. Don't need that. Uh, so under all storage, I'm gonna go volumes and view volumes. So right now I don't have any volume, even though I installed the OS on you know, one disk. So now I can create volume if I want. So I added three NAS disk. So let me create a volume for that uh, NFS share. I think I added for NFS. So go to volume manager and click on the plus here. Okay, now it presents me all of those disks that I added. Uh, so I want to choose these three disks uh, NFS vol. This will be my volume that will contain the NFS. And I can choose the rate type here. So I can do striping, rate three, uh, if I want. If I would have chosen ZFS, then I could have other options like ZFS uh, deduplication and things like that. That's pretty uh, awesome. Uh, you know, you can pre deduplication, uh, you know, for your uh, ZFS. So I want to choose NFS here, UFS. And I want to choose uh, for this, I want to choose. Um, stripe okay so you can choose different options they don't have rate 5 looks like uh, you can put it custom path but uh, if we keep it as it is so the way it will be uh, uh, naming the volume is going to be slash mnt slash nfs ball so I'm going to click on add volume It's now creating the volume. Okay, it's done. So now I have uh, one volume uh, with uh, 5.4 gigabyte, and it's in good state, looks like. And it's the path is and MNT slash MNT NFS ball. So now I can add an NFS share if I want for this volume. So to do that, I'm gonna go to sharing. And we'll say NFS and add an NFS share. Okay, I'm gonna say you know NFS share, just give it a name, comment. Authorize network, so you can specify networks if you have multiple networks on your uh, um, LAN or the wireless LAN, you know, you, you can basically say which networks get access to this uh, share. So uh, you can keep it as default, but uh, you know, or, or like in my case, I have 192.168.1.0.24. That means any com uh, system on this network would be able to access this NFS. 
I could also specify uh, IP address or host that are authorized, uh, but I'm fine with the authorizer. But you can do so if you want. So I'm going to give all directories. If you want to read only, you can do that as well. So uh, you know, uh, I want to keep everything as it is. So I'm going to click on browse and choose NFS ball. And I think that should be good enough. I don't think I have to do that. You can see the uh, free, uh, free NAS uh, website. There are different options that you can choose here, but that should be good enough, I think. Um, Would you like to enable the service? Yes. So now it's trying to start the NFS service here. So it looks like it started. Okay. So that's uh, NFS. So uh, let me see if I can mount it at all. I'll see that mount options. Then I can. I think it should be good. Show mount. Okay, so I can see the mount. That means I can uh, basically mount this uh, share uh, as NFS. So uh, that's pretty much it. So now you can go start the web to see how to mount a uh, you know, NFS share on your computer. Different operating systems are different steps involved, but in Linux and Mac should be pretty easy. So you can do so. That's pretty much about it for uh, free NAS uh, 8.3. And uh, I, at a later video, I will show you how to create an iSCSI uh, uh, share on the on the free NAS, which is from this uh, uh, services and iSCSI option, I think. Uh, but I'll I'll have a separate video for that. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, put your comment below uh, if you think uh, if you have any suggestion. Uh, thank you.